Let's define a couple of terms. An anhydrous salt is an ionic compound, that is a salt, that attracts water molecules and forms weak chemical bonds with them. A generic anhydrous salt is symbolized capital M, capital N, and that stands for metal, nonmetal, which is what we have any time we have a salt. Anhydrous means without water. An anhydrous salt is similar in concept to the desiccants that you find any time you buy vitamins or leather goods or some electronics. There will be a little packet in there that says something like silica gel, do not eat. And the reason that's in there is that it will absorb water molecules from the air at least until you've unpackaged it. Those are not anhydrous salts, but they operate similarly in the sense that an anhydrous salt also will attract water molecules. A hydrate is the salt with the water attached. Generically we could symbolize it as MN with a little dot and then a certain number of waters. Different salts attract various numbers of waters for various reasons. For example, this cobalt 2 chloride is a salt that tends to attract six water molecules for every one COCl2 unit. Sodium carbonate tends to attract 10 waters and so forth. So here we have an equation that shows how we can separate the water from the salt. On the reactant side we have the hydrate. Again the hydrate is the salt and the waters combined. When we heat the hydrate the water molecules will be driven off into the air leaving behind in our container only the anhydrous salt. It takes energy to separate the waters from the anhydrous salt. So if we make an analogy here we have Chewbacca the Wookiee who has been possibly walking through the forest of Endor and he has some cockle burrs that have gotten embedded in his fur and quite a few cockle burrs tend to grab on to Chewbacca. A stormtrooper will not get as many cockle burrs. It takes energy to separate the cockle burrs from these individuals. The cockle burrs here represent water. If we input some energy we're going to get a cockle burr free Wookiee and a cockle burr free stormtrooper and the cockle burrs will be separate from the Wookiee. This is the kind of thing we can do with hydrates in the lab. We can heat them, we can separate the water molecules from the anhydrous salt and then by weighing some things we can actually calculate how many water molecules must have been attached. And if the anhydrous salt is wookie. There are lots of waters that are attached. Paolo the chef is going to help us find the formula of a hydrate. And here's his recipe. One, find the number of grams of salt and the number of grams of water. Two, convert each of those grams into moles. Three, divide each of those numbers of moles by the smallest of those. And finally, use that ratio to find the hydrates formula. If you've seen one of my previous lessons on finding empirical formulas, this recipe is exactly the same one that we used in that lesson to find empirical formulas. Let's try an example. Strontium chloride is an anhydrous salt on which the following data were collected. Find the formula of the hydrate. We have the mass of a beaker. We have the beaker and the sample before we've heated it. Of course that's going to weigh more than simply the beaker. Then after we've heated it we can see that it's lost some of its mass. The beaker plus the sample before heating that's the beaker and the hydrate. Or as I've shown here that's the beaker plus the salt plus the waters. After we've heated it the water has gone off into the air. So this mass, 138.2 grams, represents the mass of the beaker plus the mass of the salt. If we draw it pictorially, there's the beaker, 
there's the beaker and the anhydrous salt represented by Chewbacca and the water which you can see is the cockleburrs and after we've heated it notice that the cockleburrs which represent the water are no longer in the beaker but the salt still is so let's solve this problem the first step is to find the number of grams of salt so to do that isn't it clear to find the number of grams of salt that we're going to take the beaker plus the salt number and subtract off the beaker. That will give us 73.0 grams of salt. 138.2 minus 65.2. We also need to find the number of grams of water. And to do that, we're going to take 187.9 minus 138.2 because the 187.9 is the beaker and the salt and the water and the 138.2 is the beaker and the salt so if we take beaker salt and water minus beaker and salt we'll be left with water down here in the lower left that was step one step two is convert each of these grams into moles we're told what the name of this salt is it's strontium chloride. From the periodic table, strontium, when it's an ion, has a 2 plus charge. The chloride ion is 1 minus. So the formula of this salt is SrCl2, which gives us a molar mass for that salt of 158.6. You find the molar mass of strontium from the periodic table. You take the molar mass of chlorine two times. You add all that up. It's 158.6 grams. Notice how the gram units cancel, and that's how many moles of salt we have. We're going to do the same thing with water. From the periodic table, oxygen has a molar mass of 16, plus two hydrogens at one gram each. That's 18 grams, 2.76 moles of water. So step one, get grams of salt and grams of water. Step two, convert to moles of each of those substances. Step three, Divide each of those by the smallest of those, which gives us one salt for every six waters. And now we're ready to write the formula. There's the salt. One time over, put a dot with six waters, and we're done.